handful of the ones from the church. And Amen. As Keith said, he thanked God for me. I thank God for him and Becky and him standing behind me. Come on. He's been a blessing to me. Amen. The whole church has been. Billy has been. Come on. Everybody has been. You know, today my heart's been kind of heavy. Yeah. You know, it's been five years ago today that I lost my mother-in-law. And, and, you know, but I thank God, Billy, you know, about a month and a half before she, before she passed away, my wife led her to the Lord. Amen. And it's worth it all. Amen. Yeah. That she knew Jesus before she left. Oh, yes. You know, that's the main thing. Come on. Yeah. You know, God could have took her a month and a half earlier. Come on. Oh, yeah. But he waited a month and a half later that she's ready to go. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I thank God that she was ready. Yeah. Amen. You know, tonight I was going to be reading here before I read here and before I get to this verse. And every time I read this, I think about Aaron. Y'all know her in a little bit. Because it talks about when we give a glass of cold water. On, to on. a prophet. Come on. We'll receive a prophet reward. Yeah. And we're talking about that. And when I say this before I start preaching, I remember back in the first of the year, it was probably about the end of May, right before school was out. And I was in the tree down there by Keith and them, their neighbor's tree. And Aaron got off the bus and he came up there and he said, Ronnie, you want something to drink? And I said, Yeah. He said, I'll go there and get you something. I said, Take this glass and give me some of your mamma's tea. He said, all right. So he comes up with a glass of tea, and I said, you know what? You're going to be blessed. He said, why? I said, the Bible says when you give a glass of cold water, the prophet man, you receive a prophet ward. He said, really? I said, yeah, can you imagine what you're going to receive for this glass of tea? <laughs> so, Lord, as I get to read this, I always think about that. Yeah. So now I want to start at 36, Matthew 10, verse 36. And, and a, let me get in here. And a man's fool, wait, no, wait a minute, let me take it up. Okay, 37, I'm sorry. He that loved father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that take not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that find his life shall lose it. And he that lose his life for my sake shall find it. He that receive you receive me, and he that receive me receive him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet reward. And he that receive a re righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. And whosoever shall receive well, no, wait, shall give to drink into one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciples. Come on. Cold water only in the name of a disciples. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Amen. So there now, thinking up here when I started verse 37, he that loved father or mother more than me is Come not on. worthy of me. Hallelujah. He that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Oh, come on, come on. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is oh, not worthy of me. He that find his life shall lose it. And he that lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. How many is willing tonight to lose their life for Jesus? Come on. How many loves him tonight enough? Come on. To lay down their life for Him. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You know, Billy, I find it in many times we say we love God with all our heart. Yeah. But we don't even want to go to church. Oh. Come on. Come on. And we say that we love God more than anybody. Come on. But we put everything before Him. Come on. But we say we love Him. But we don't want to spend time in a prayer closet. Come on. Come on. 
But we say we love him. But we don't even love our neighbor. The Bible says, how can you love your brother? How can you love me who you have not seen? If you don't even love your brother who you have seen. You know, tonight it's hard sometimes when we think about how Jesus died for us. Last night it was pouring down rain and on the way home. We got almost to South Carrollton. I seen this guy sitting on the side of the road. And as I get in, he's broke down. I get to pass him up. So I looked at that and I said, I think he's having trouble. Chris and them was in there and I said, yeah, and I get to pass him up. That's why it's ringing. So I go on down and I turned around. Chris and I said, yeah, but you don't know anymore to help anybody or not. Amen. I said, yeah, but I got to. Come on. Because I get to think, what would Jesus do? Come on. He said, yeah, but you never know what anybody's going to do anymore. But I said, yeah, but are we ready to meet Jesus? Come on. Everybody said, yeah. I said, we had nothing to lose then. Because you know what? I said, but if I was that's an angel underwear, you never know that could be an angel. That God sat there to test you. Just see when you pass him on by. Amen. Sometimes God puts somebody in your path just to see do you have the love of God or not. Yeah, it's pouring down rain. Come on. Yeah, I passed no by, but my heart got heavy. I had to turn around and go oh, back. Because oh, 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 oh. I had to have enough love Hallelujah. for my brother. But I was put to the test. Come on. But guess what, Billy? When I turn around and go back, I get to turn in, they get to pull out. But see, sometimes God will just test you. Come on. Right. See, willing, are you willing? To show somebody enough love. Yep. Come on. To put yourself aside. Come on. To help your neighbor that's in need. Oh, hallelujah. We say we love God, but we don't love our brethren. Come on. Oh my God. Come on. Oh, we say that we have the love of God, but we run everybody down. Come on. Come on. Come on. We say we're Christian. But we talk about everybody. <laughs> you know why the church is empty anymore? Come on. You know why it's hard to get the sinners in the church anymore? Come on. God help me. But you know why, Billy, it's the one the sinners looking at the church anymore? Because the so-called Christians. <laughs> Talking about the brothers and sisters. Oh, huh? And the sinners don't see no difference in the church anymore and in the world anymore. Come on. Come on. Oh, help me, God. Because we think we're calling ourselves a Christian, huh? but we're talking about the people, huh? and we're not showing the love huh? that we need to show. Huh? We're running them down, huh? and we're criticizing them. Huh? You know what? Huh? There may be a drug addict out there, huh? but they may love enough. Huh? But you know what? Huh? Maybe they may just get on the wrong path. Come on. That's right. You know what? You got to show them love. I had this one guy. He used to be my dope dealer. I get dope for him all the time. When I come to the Lord, there for a while, Billy, when I got in church, I played church. Come on. I was in for a few weeks and I was back out. Yeah. But I remember this time. When I got in church and he told my brother, he said, well, it won't be a few weeks he'll be back down here. Because he was used to me doing that. Yeah. So it was about a month ago, my brother David told me, he said, Ronnie, will you take me down there and see my son? And I said, yes. So I took him down there and when he came to me in his car, almost running, he, he knocked on my window. He said, I knew you'd be back. What do you need? Don't I need you? I need to tell you about Jesus. Woo! He said, no, I don't need to hear that. And he began to walk away. He told my brother Dave, he said, oh, he's still crazy. But it won't be much longer. 
It was probably maybe about four or five months later. I went back down there. Here he come almost running to the car. And I said, here we go again. And when he got there, you know what he told me, Billy? He said, I met that man named Jesus! It wasn't about three weeks later he got killed. (laughs) Am I not telling the truth, Marcus? It was Marcus' dad. But I thank God that I showed that light that I didn't give up. And it's been almost 20 years ago. I'm still set free from drugs. I'm still set free from cigarettes. I'm still set free from alcohol. Because I've been bought by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed. I've been forgiven. Because by Jesus Christ. Amen. About five years ago, my brother's in a rehab. And they had, when they get set free, they had this class you go to. And everybody's been set free. They can give a testimony. Yeah. So, Doug, want me to come to a graduation? So they gave it to him. And when he came my turn, they asked me, how did I get set free? And they pretty well throw me out. I said, let me tell you, it wasn't by no rehab. It wasn't by no jail. I said, it was by the blood of Jesus. When I knelt down on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And they said, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's called confusion. I said, that's why you keep seeing the repeat over and over and over. Because you're not telling the truth. Only way you can be set free is by and through the blood of Jesus. But there's power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. Only thing you wash your sins away is the blood of Jesus. Oh, it can take an old sinner and wash it white as snow. Amen. Amen. Help me, Lord. You know what? When I got up from that altar, people please won't say it, I always say. But let me tell you something, really. You know what, really, once you get saved, you really get it. You don't want to go back to that world. You really don't want to go back. Because you know what? Once you got saved from it and you really got forgiveness, you don't want to go back to it. That's right. Come on. But you can't fall out of grace. Come on, man. You're not zipped from the devil. Nope. Yeah. But you know what? When I got up from that altar, <laughs> I left it there. Praise the Lord. There's one thing. I don't want to fear nobody with you do this when you not. But like I said, I'm going to preach you the truth. Come on. Then the hair looks the devil. I'm sorry. Do you get mad and wave me? You take it up with Billy. <laughs> He's the pastor here. He's my bodyguard. Come on. There's something I hold on to when I got saved for about a month, Billy. Yeah. It was my cigarettes. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't want to let them go. Come on. I remember one day at work, this guy I went here was a preacher. We come to Wayne Dukes. He was preaching. I told him, I said, this is going to be my last pack of cigarettes. There's probably about 14, 15 left. He said, no, it won't. I said, yeah, it will. I'm he on. said, no, it won't. And I said, yeah, it will. Yeah. Well, it's going back and forth. He said, no, it won't. I said, yeah, it will. <laughs> he said, no, it won't. He said, I said, what well, make you think it won't? He said, because if you really want to give them up, you wouldn't want another one. Come on. You wouldn't wait till your last one. Come on. That stuck with me. Come on. Right. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? You're right. And I took that pack of cigarettes and I crumbled them up and I threw them in the garbage. And I thank God it's been over 19 years and I hadn't touched another one. Because you know what? I got my mind made up. I didn't want them no more. 
Because you know what? The devil will keep letting you tell me, well, this will be my last one. This will be my last one. But when you get your mind made up, that will be your last one. By the word of God, I'm set free. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed. Oh, can I go a little further? Come on. We've used excuse. Oh, can I? We used excuse. I can't afford to pay my tithes. Uh -oh. oh, but we can afford to buy a carton of cigarettes. Uh oh, come on now. Because you're robbing God. Amen. Come on. That's right. Oh, God. Hallelujah. You can feel when the heat gets on you, can't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> People's all right when you're pe preaching on blessings. On, but now. when you begin to talk about how you're missing your blessings, on, uh, then they don't like that preaching. On, but sometimes uh, you got to tell them uh, what's hindering their blessings. Come on, yeah. Amen. Amen. Preach. Oh. There's some good things, there's some bad things and everything. Yep. Yeah. But you know what, Billy, I gotta say, my wife was one the most person was given. Yeah. We can have twenty dollars to her name. Come on. When somebody needed, she would give it. Yeah. And I would say, Well, that's all we got. She said, Well, you know what? When you only got what you got, and when you learn to give, God will begin to multiply. You know what? I never had a bag for bread. I never missed a meal. I never lost my water. I never lost my power. Because God's always been right on time. Because you know what? When you're faithful to the little things, He'll make you rule over me. But so many times we sit back Come on. and we hold back. I don't know why I'm going here tonight. Come on. I, you can ask me, church in here tonight. I never preach one message. I always preach about ten messages together. But I remember this time. I was at the church and we're in the hill. We're in the vault now. There's no sister in law. Y'all know her. She knew when I was about 19 years old, I was saving for a vehicle. Yeah. You know how you got to have somebody coach you with your money? When they came to the same, she said, Ronnie, I'm going to help you. I said, all right. So this man just came by from the church, and he was broke down. And Chris let him preach. They took up an offering from him. So they passed the offering plate. And when I put it on for them, and I'm not telling this to brag, I'm telling you about the glory of God. Yeah. Man. When it went by, I put a hundred dollars in there. And Brenda looked at me and said, Ronnie, do you know you just put a hundred dollars in there? And I said, No, Brenda. I thought it was a ten. She said, Well, here, take this hundred back. Because I know you're saving for a vehicle. Yeah. And give me the ten. So I took it back and gave her a ten. This boy spoke to me and said, No, I wanted you to give the hundred. So I turned around and I said, here, Brenda, i got to give the honey. She said, Ronnie, you're saving for the vehicle. Yeah. I said, well, I don't care. I know what the Lord told me. She said, well, here, if you take the tin back. And I said, nope, that's for being greedy. You keep the tin, too. Come on. <laughs> and she said, I said, nope. She said, well, I can't go against that, Ronnie. Yeah. So we ended up coming with $110. Yeah. But I was saving for a vehicle. Come on. But you know what happened next day, Billy? I go into work. This is God on the My boss called me in the office. He said, Ronnie, I need to talk to you. I said, all right. I didn't care. He said, I don't know why, but I need you to go with me. I said, all right. He said, we got to go to the courthouse getting this vehicle changed over. He said, I'm going to give you this vehicle. I'm going to pay to change it over. And I'm going to put six months insurance on it for you. It didn't cost me a penny. Hallelujah. But just been obedient to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Tell me God won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you're not even able to take. But then with I was greedy and took it back, I would miss my blessing. But with you obedient to the Holy Ghost, He'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you're not even able to take. But sometimes we're so greedy. We're so greedy. Can I tell y'all something? It's going to blow your mind. But I got a witness here. I showed him the text. I heard I had a guy, a prophet, prophesying on me. He's shaking his head. You know what this prophet told me? He said, Brother, I need to pray for you and your marriage. God's going to work everything out for you. But you know what he told me? Before I pray for you, I need you to send me in this love offering. Oh my goodness. Did it not, Aaron? He said, Before I pray, yeah, I need you to go ahead and you make this much money. Then I'm going to agree with you. And Aaron's working with me. I said, Man, can you believe this? Come on. Now, I had to go back with the word with me, Lee. I said, I never seen in the word of God. Come on. <laughs> Where he sell his prayers. Oh, come on, come now. on now. Come I on. never seen in the word of God where you put a price on a prayer. Oh, come on, come on. I never come seen on. in the word where he said he sell it. He said three and a half received, three and a half give. Yeah. And when yeah. I come back to the word, it wasn't been about three minutes. It blocked me. Come on. People don't want the truth. They want your money. But when you tell them the truth, it don't take long to get rid of you. But you know what? He didn't want me to find out he wasn't real. He wanted my money first. That's right. Yep. Come on. See how people try to sell you things. Yeah. A few days before that, you know what I seen? They were selling the blood of Jesus. See how ignorant people is. Yeah, Mom. How can you get the blood? Yeah. You can't. The blood runs through you when you get saved. Come on. But see, people fall for this thing. Yep. Yeah. But when you're ignorant to the word, but when you read the King James Version, Come on, yeah. you get the real thing. Come the on. truth shall set you free. Yeah. Today, are we loving Jesus more than we love anybody? Are we sold out to Jesus? Are we sold out to the world? Yeah. Are we sold out? What are we sold out to? Come on. Yeah. We sold out. Yeah. But you know what? I've never seen the Christians, I'm preaching to myself tonight, so defeated, so discouraged, yeah. Yeah. so depressed. Yeah. <laughs> Depression's is running wild. Even with Christians. Yeah. Amen. Because the devil's got a short time to work. Come on. See, the devil's at your heart. No, the devil's at your mind. Come on. But he can get your mind off of Jesus. Yeah. And get it on the things of the world, and he'll get your heart. Come on. But he's trying to get your mind tormented. Oh. He's trying to get your mind discouraged, make you think God don't love you. Come on. Make you think God don't care. Make you think, where's your God? Come on. <laughs> you, you know better than God. Come on. <laughs> Did he not try to tempt Jesus Christ himself? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Did he not? Yeah. Amen. Did he not? Come on, yeah. yes. <laughs> he tried to tempt him. Yeah. And we think the devil's so weak. But you know what? The devil took third of heaven with him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He was the next man, right hand to God. Come on. He had it made. Yeah. But see, we think that we can straddle the fence and we can play church a little while and we can do a little bit in the world and we can go right back to Jesus. He said, My spirit not always drive with me. Come on. We're walking on dangerous ground. Yeah. It's time, church, let's get real. It's time to get real. Let's get a made up mind. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and when yeah. God don't really play church, He don't play church. Come on. Either we're in or we're out. Yeah. He said, You're either for me or you're against me. Come on. He said, You're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Come on. Yep. <laughs> There's neither hot or cold. Yeah. You're either hot 
shadow cold. What are we to know? Do we really love him? Do we? Do we, as Billy plays something, or somebody, whoever, I want to stink tonight. Do we really love him? How much do we love him? Do we love him enough 